Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, REI Nation Facebook Live group call this afternoon. Glad you could join us. I'll get to our guests in just a second. And I'll introduce him. Um, again, thank you for joining the call this afternoon. We hope you uh, enjoy the next 30 some odd minutes uh, with our guest. His name is Jim Raper, longtime Memphis uh, uh, FedEx employee. And we'll get to uh, where he's at and hear his story in just a minute. I think you're going to really, really like it. But I want to remind you to hit the uh, the like button and the love button on your thing there and share it with other people. That's how we've grown the group today to almost 2,500 people are in a group in a very short time since we started it. Got a lot of existing investors on there. Got a lot of new potential investors on there. Have a few entrepreneurs on there learning about some business things. So I think some of the content will be really, really good today. And uh, Jim and I'll talk about property management, buying and selling houses, renting houses, and uh, how he's handled his portfolio over the years and uh, so on and so forth. So let me just uh, introduce you and tell you a little bit about Jim and then he'll, he'll jump on here and tell you the rest of the story or, or correct anything I say is wrong. But <laughs> I think we met probably back in 1986, 1987, I believe. Yep. And we played, uh, softball in in memphis together and then i think we started traveling and playing together i think i have some pictures of some all-night softball tournaments in texas that we were a part of back in the late 80s early 90s and then i think we continue to play uh at least i'm a little bit older than jim i played into my 40s 50s and 60s and i think we played a little bit together all during that time traveling the country a little bit and playing together and then uh I had some health issues in my early 60s, so I kind of backed out. Jim, I think, still played for a while. Don't know, don't think he's playing anymore today, but we'll let him tell us about that. Um, so we've been friends probably for over 30 years, wouldn't you say, Jim? Yep. Something like that. And yeah. then, uh, we didn't really get involved in real estate together till 10 or 12, 14 years after that, probably after we first knew each other. And that was only, that was by coincidence, I think, but we'll uh, get him to tell you the, the story and the backstory and we'll get into uh, his real estate investment uh, uh, practice and how tremendously successful he's been over the years and how he's done it. Um, Jim, will, I'll get him to tell us about, he was with FedEx here for many, many years and then retired and moved back home to where he lives in West Virginia. So Jim, uh, welcome to the call this afternoon. Good to see you, man. Can't wait Thank to get you. you to come out here to Memphis and pop in on us again here and check us out. But uh, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about how all this started. Well, I guess, like you said, I worked at FedEx. And in 2001, there was a layoff. And they just laid off a bunch of people. And nobody, there was no rhyme or reason. So it's kind of like, well, you know, it'd be nice to have something to fall back on. So after talking about it for about three years or so, you know, I decided to, you know, get into it. And then I saw that you were speaking at the Memphis Investors Group in Memphis at the time. So I gave you a holler and said, hey, I, I'm going to want to get into this. Can you help me out? So then we started talking and, you know, I bought my first house in March of 2005. And, you know, we would get together, have lunch in the, in the truck and drive around and you would show me some of the houses you have. And, and, and when I bought the one in March, I actually bought two when, of the time we were there. So got started that way. And then I bought most, probably 30 of them. I have, I have 38 properties and probably 30 of them were purchased between 2005 and 2008. Oh. And then, you know, kind of slowed down a little bit. And then I've just picked up one here and there uh, from different people, uh, knowing people at FedEx, it's, you know, from a friend of a friend of a friend, Hey, you know, I got this house and, you know, some of them ended up being pretty good. They say, well, they just want what they owe on it. It's like, well, how much do they owe on it? So, you know, it's like, well, $28,000. I said, I'll take it. And one of them, one of them was 25,000. It's like, I'll take it. Those were the good old days, man. Those ain't out there anymore. I know. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, those are, those have done real well. And, when I first started, we basically were doing everything on 30 year mortgages because we were wanting the cash flow. And then over time I've changed 
most of them to 15 year loans or less. So I've got the 38 properties. I have three that are paid for. Another one's going to be paid for next month. So I'll have four. And then the big hit's going to come in a little less than two years because I'll have 15 more paid for. So that's going to free up like $10,000 worth of payments that I'll no longer have. Uh, I've got like $36,000 in rent that comes in every month and I'm paying 24, 25,000 on mortgages, but it, you know, I might be making $250 a month cash flow, but I'm actually making more because I probably have 13 to 14,000 in pay down every month. So the mortgages are being paid down. You know, most of the houses have appreciated, so they're going to be worth a lot more when they're paid for. There you go. And you know, I get a lot of people that you know call me, "Hey, you want to sell your house?" And it's like, "Well, not really, because it's it's probably worth more to rent than it is to sell." So I just go with that, and that's pretty much it. And like Kent said, we we met probably in '86 or '87. We've been stayed in contact ever since, and. When I retired from FedEx, I actually moved to West Virginia before I retired because I asked if I could, you know, work remotely. And they were like, oh, yeah, we can work that out. And I was thinking, dang, I should have asked that a long time ago. But anyway, I worked up here for a couple of years and then they offered us a buyout. So I took that and retired last May. So now I'm just living the life. Jim, how long were you in Memphis? 38 years. 38 I worked years. at FedEx 35. And then West Virginia is home, right? Yes. Yep. So as I recall, I spoke one night at ARIA. Then when I got through, I think you were in the audience, weren't you? Well, no, I actually saw that you were, uh, people were saying that if you're going to get involved, you should join the local investors group. Yeah. So I looked it up on online and I saw that you were going to speak. So I think I showed up. I, I think I knew that you were going to be there. So I went and. Then I hollered at you. So, and correct me if I'm wrong here. So after that, you and I talked and you said, I don't have time to go and find these properties. I don't have exactly. time to do any of this. I'm playing ball, which you were about that time, several nights a week and traveling on the weekends, if I recall, yep. and working at FedEx. But I want to get into this. And then over time, as Jim uh, accumulated his properties and started, then he got educated on the property management side of it. And today, even from, from Virginia, he manages his own property. West Virginia. Uh, excuse me, West Virginia. Oh, that's a bad <laughs> yeah, Don't say Virginia. Don't okay. get that wrong. <laughs> don't get that wrong. Manages his own properties, does his own thing from there with help of some people that he has on the, on the, on the ground here. Um, so Jim, over the years, how have the properties produced month in and month out for you with, uh, having residents and maintenance. I heard, I heard about the pay down and the eventual payoff and uh, some of the financing things that you're doing, but uh, talk to us a little bit about how they've performed and if what you would do differently besides maybe putting them on those 15 years, what else would you do differently? Uh, not real sure. I, I think when we first started doing them on our own, we may have over rehabbed them a little bit and, you know, put a little bit more money into it than we should have for where the houses are. I know you guys are doing more high end houses now and probably, you know, better to do that. But, you know, we have some, I mean, like our rent, some of the rents are like $600. So our rents range from 600 to 1500. Uh, 18 your of the houses are in the university of the Memphis area, which that's, I like that area. They're very rarely have any vacancies. It, well, actually anywhere. I mean, I'll put them, as soon as I find out the people are leaving, I, I put it out there for rent and it's, it's rented way before the people leave. They're just waiting on me to get it ready to, for them to move in. Jim, what did it do during COVID when s the students, I'm assuming some of those are students that live in those houses could work uh, or, or could attend school uh, virtually. How did that work on those houses when that happened? It actually really didn't affect? really affect me too much. I had one person that their rent was up at the end of May and they asked me like May 1st, Hey, can we, you know, we get out of the lease cause you know, we're not there. And I said, well, you know, I don't really have anything built in. You only have one more month. I mean, if I, you know, I, so I really didn't 
didn't help them out much. But so they just went ahead and paid their one month that they had left and they were gone. But everybody else is, you know, they're, I guess they have to live somewhere. So they're. You think most of them over there in the, in the university area are just doing the virtual from the house there? That's what, that's what they're doing. Jim, you there? Froze up here, maybe. Okay, Jim, there you there? go. Yeah. yeah. You think most of the kids that are, or most of the people that are in those university houses are just doing it virtually from the house? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And and actually, the, the 18, I need to, I should go back and count them, but of the 18 that are in the U of M area, you know, I thought it was going to be like 10 or 15% yeah. non students, but it's at least 50 50 because wow. people like to live down in that area. Yep. How have you so, done on, uh, whenever you have a move out, what is a, what is a typical move out costing you? And well, first off the average house that you have, what's the average square foot size? Ooh, they're probably smaller, maybe 1200 square feet. 1200, three bedroom, yeah. two bath or three bedroom, one bath. Or what do you, what, what? I got, I've some got of mostly, all of there's some two bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, two baths. Yeah. And I've got some four bedrooms. Yep. two baths and i've got two that are four bedroom three baths how long does your typical resident stay in a house well my average is a little less than yours which is i'm i'm right at three years yep yep and probably part of that is the u of m area you know turn over kids it's, yeah it's kind of like you know they're going to be gone yep. and even if a lot of times <laughs> this is kind of interesting because people will, when they're getting ready to move out, they say, well, we have some friends that want to move in. So I don't even have to put it up for rent because they are they've seen the house. All they do is fill out the application and they move in. There's no, no wait time or anything. Oh, that's great. And so I, I kind of count those as a new move in because it's different people. When you and I did a just have one person that had lived in my house for eight years that just moved out because they built a house. Yep. So they were great tenants. I hated to see that, but I'm glad that they got their house built. Well, when you have a typical resident that moves out after three years, let's say on average, what does it cost you to bring that house back to uh, rent ready with all the quality of life issues? Uh, between two and $5,000. Yeah. You know, depending, depending on how, on how good they leave there, it. Most yeah. people are pretty good. They don't like tear it up. So yeah, we see that it depends on, every year that they're there longer, you know, we recently had some, uh, uh, we had a couple of $4,000 and I think we had a five and $6,000 move out, but they'd been there five or six years. Right. And I mean, that's a lot of wear and tear on the house, depending on if you have pets and kids and children or what, whatever you have in, in, in the property. So if you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? Well, I probably would have started earlier, you know, cause I just turned 60. So it would have been nice if some of this yeah, would have been paid to, off. Welcome to the club, younger. okay? Do what? Welcome to the club. <laughs> I hear you. I'm about to go past you in two months when I turn 70, okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. What would you do different? Uh, like I said, starting earlier would have been the big thing because if you could start earlier and then when we started, I probably wouldn't have done any 30-year loans. I would have done all 15 and just you know got them all paid off. Luckily, with the, uh, the HARP loan, which is – came about a few years ago where you could just refinance for no cost if it was a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan. So I went in, I did all those and changed them to 15 year loans. And then since I have so many, I was able to go through one of the local banks to, to bundle several houses into commercial loans. And you know those are paying down pretty quick because they do five year loans amortized over 15 years and then they just renew it every five years. So those are the ones that the 15 are going to be paid off in a couple of years. Well, you know, a lot of our listeners on here, we get questions time to time is after I buy my first 10, how do, where do I go to get them financed and talk a little bit more about that. Uh, what you did after you, cause you talk about Fannie and Freddie and that they, of course they don't cover them, but what do you, what do, what do you do? What would you suggest people do today when they hit that 10, 10 mark house? Well, the, it's I'm, I'm not I hadn't done it in a while, so I'm not real sure what the rules are. But even back then, I think the rules changed every day. I mean, but if you could find a bank that would do, you know, put them all together, and have 
even like if you had 10 houses and they would take and do two, two fives, you know, have five in each loan, then, then they're basically in your company name and they're out of your name. And you're open back up where you can go back to the one to 10, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then what, what I did, I had my house in Memphis was almost paid for. So I had gotten like a $250,000 line of credit and I was buying them with that and then financing them with, you know, 80% of the value. So I was at a little bit of money with the home equity line of credit, but that was, that allowed me to get them. Yeah. So today are all of your houses in Memphis or do you have any anywhere else? Nope. They're all in Memphis. They're all in Memphis. So over the years that you've had them, what type of appreciation are you seeing on these things on your properties? Like maybe annually? <laughs> Well, some of them, and we talked about this that very first day we rode around that, you know, some areas are going to appreciate, others are going to pretty much stay the same. Yeah. Well, this, the boom we've had here recently, everything's gone way up. Like I've got one in East Memphis that's, I think I paid 80,000 for it. And it's, I think it would probably sell for 180,000. And then there's some, in some areas, you know, I paid, 30 or 35 for them, they're probably worth 45 or 50. So, you know, they're not going to, obviously the ones that are that low aren't going to appreciate that much, but yeah, but the nicer, and then U of M area, I think uh, some of those houses over there that I, you know, I kind of keep an eye on what sells and what doesn't. And I've got a three bedroom, two bath right down the street from a two bedroom, two bath that sold for 160. And I think we paid 74 for it. So, wow. Some of those have really appreciated. Some of them have just appreciated a little, you know, so kind of those are, those are the houses, mixture. Oh, I was gonna say, those are the houses, Jim, that you bought back in five, six, seven, and eight or whatever it was back in there. Yes. Yeah. Um, typical rents in the last couple of years, have you been able to increase your rents as you moved along here? I have generally the people that are with me I try not to go up on them and I've started doing, I, I've, I've offered, I do every, everything with a one year lease to start with. And then when I send them a renewal letter, I give them the option to renew for two years. Well, if they only renew for one year, then the next year, then I might bump the rent. Cause God, I gave so them nice. the option. You're such what? a nice landlord. I know I'm, I'm, I am nice. <laughs> You're such a nice landlord. <laughs> So anyway, I try to work with, I mean, you know, like I had one girl, one lady that, you know, she was kind of struggling a little bit and she's in one of the lower income houses, which, you know, it's fine. It was, she was paying 625 and, you know, I, I lowered it to 600 for it just to help her out a little bit. But so, but when people move on the other hand, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well now I'm going to bump it up. Yeah. And now I'm like, wonder if I should bump it up even more because they're, they're renting so fast. It's like, maybe, I didn't, maybe I'm still not asking enough. <laughs> well, nationwide and in a lot of cities, even Memphis, the, the rents are going up. And again, you have to just, you can't go up a lot. You got to go a little bit at a time and uh, you're seeing it. How about maintenance calls on your houses? What 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 are typically maintenance calls run, working and what type of calls are you getting? What are those costing? Well, those are, those vary. I mean, sometimes I'll, you know, I tell people when they move in that if you have any water leak to let me know immediately because I want to fix it. I would rather fix a $50 problem than have a $500 problem down the road. Sure. And most people are good about that. So, you know, I've, I've got a handyman that's, you know, one of my best friends and he'll, he'll go over and take care of it. And when he's there, he'll always say, is there anything else that needs to be done while I'm here? And he'll, he'll knock it out. Now, you know, if I have like a roof problem or a heat and air problem, I call a different person for that. But, you know, and some of those can get expensive. Yeah. So you got licensed plumbers, licensed HVAC people at all. Yep. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm lucky enough that the time that I was in Memphis, you know, I've met all these people, you know, the heat and air guy, the roofer, you know, electrician, plumber, you know, they're all there. Built so, all these relationships with people. Yeah. Um, so you bought your first house. What age were you when you bought your first house? Uh, 44. Are you in your 40s? So 
I guess what you were saying a few minutes ago that you'd wish you'd have done that. How much earlier do you wish you'd have done well, that? Well, if I'd have started even like when I was 30 or even 34, you know, 10 years earlier, yeah, most of these would be paid off. Yeah. Yep. And then when I get these other other 15 paid off in a couple of years, it's like, well, I can either basically pay the other ones off over a couple of years or just keep paying them down. Yep. Uh, I'll make that decision then. But it's like when you got $30,000 a month coming in, you know, you can, you can pay off a bunch of stuff. So when you, uh, and being 60 or whatever right now, what, what would your exit strategy be on the properties? Uh, and when would that be down the road? Well, I'll probably keep keep them and keep renting them because to, to me, and I, and I tell people this all the time, that they're worth more to rent than they are to sell. I mean, tell people, have, what, tell people what you mean by that. Well, like if, if I'm making, well, when they're, when they're paid off, for instance, you know, I might be making a thousand dollars a month on a house. Well, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. If you're gonna want to buy my house and I'm gonna make twenty five thousand dollars, that sounds great right now. But I'm gonna make that in the next two years, and that multiply that by thirty eight. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to just to sell them, just to sell them. Yep. Now, somebody would want to offer me like you know several million dollars for the whole lot. I'd probably sell them, and then I'd have you know that money that I could invest in. <laughs> not have the houses, but it would have to be something that would, you know, have to be really good. I mean, that would be pretty good if you could get that for 38 houses, wouldn't it? That's what I think. <laughs> it put out that you made, you, you never know what somebody might, might, might pay today. So exactly. Uh, Cause like I said, the values have gone way up here recently. So what, uh, what advice would you give, people on the call today and you've been doing this now for uh what 15 16 15, years 16, right yeah what advice would you give uh the people in their 30s or 40s whatever age group they're in about getting into real estate you have a you had a great job with a great company i'm sure a great retirement thing after you retired at what age uh, 58 but you could have retired earlier i remember you and i talking about yeah, that i was right? going to retire at 55 that, which is our early retirement. But one yeah. of the guys that I worked with had gotten cancer and he wasn't going to make it. So I stuck around to help, you know, I didn't want to have out. leave him in a bind. But, but you could have, so I could have retired. Away, yeah, you could have retired at 55. What advice would you give people on the call today about that are on the fence thinking about getting into real estate? Don't want to, is it the right time to buy? What's going to happen to the market? Well, all of these things that people concerned about rightfully so and worried about sometimes right. what we, what advice well, would you give people today? I would say to get off the fence and go ahead and start buying. Because the longer you wait, the more things are going to be. You know, if you wait five years, it's going to cost a lot more to get into it than it's going to be now. And then, you know, you're five years into paying it off. So you look back at these, you look back at these houses and it's true. 15, eight, 17 years ago, we were buying houses for 50 and $80,000. Those days are long gone. Okay. Today. And, uh, we're paying a lot more, obviously, in each city that we're in for houses, but um, but we're selling houses today. Our average sale price today is about 170000 today, and we actually have houses today that we're selling over uh, 200000 today. I think we have three or four houses available today that are over two hundred. So our, our average price is going up. So Yeah. All right, so all let me see. I got a, I got, all I got the rehab question. costs are going up tremendously, too. Yeah. Our rehab today, uh, I looked a little while ago, we had a hundred, we have 130 rehabs going on in eight cities. Average rehab cost has gone up a little bit this month, $41,000. So we, uh, we, we spent a lot of money. All right. So I have a question here. All right. So they didn't put on there who this is from. Okay. There it is. Do you have plans to continue to purchase additional properties or focus on, or focus on paying off the existing ones? I think I'm, since I am 60, I think I'm going to, unless something good just falls in my lap, I'm more interested in paying them off and just reaping the benefits. And then maybe at some time just selling the package, huh? Yeah. If that, if that becomes an option, you know, I'll definitely think about it, but you know, right now I'm just trying to get them paid down so I can start enjoying some of the money coming in. 
Yeah, there is a, again, whenever you get ready to sell that package, there's a lot of people out there that would certainly look at that with you. And, um, uh, what other things, Jim, today? Topics? Well, I can't really think anything right off hand. You got I think people here, you there, Jim? He froze up on me again. There, where'd he go? Let's see if he comes back. There you go. You're back. I'm back. I lost you there for a minute. I lost the uh, video here. Where am I? I can see you now. There you are. There you go. I got it. So, uh, well, look, it's been great having you on here. 25, 30 minutes we've been on here. I just want to thank you and see anything else today you want to enlighten our listeners with. I appreciate you jumping on here this afternoon. Uh, Did I take you off the golf course today or what? No, it's a little chilly for golf today. It's like 40 degrees here, but it's supposed to be 60 tomorrow. <laughs> so you're out. They you try to get out one out more in, time before the before it goes too cold. You're out in Wheeling, West Virginia, yep. about an hour from Pittsburgh, right? Correct. What's your typical day like retired there? Well, it's kind of nice. You get up and you don't have to do anything. And then you when work- you get that done, you don't have to do anything else. Are you, are you working out and – uh, riding or I'm walking. actually, I just got a treadmill set up. I'm going to start hitting that every day. So you're on the treadmill. Are you, and uh, I started playing when I retired in May of last year, I started playing golf. So I was a little bit late starter because as Kent said before, we played softball for umpteen years and we played five nights a week and every weekend just about. So we didn't, didn't really have time to play golf, but I tore my Achilles three years ago. So I figured it was time to start, stop playing softball and, so I took up golf last May, and I'm I'm working on getting better. So are they working on you trying to come back and play in this over sixty traveling? They thing always do. To do. Yep. When are you gonna come back? Are you ready to start playing? It's like no, I'm a, I'm a golfer now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you'll ever play again? Uh. Uh-uh. I still got my stuff in the garage, and I look at it. I say, eh, my Mine's bag in, is there. Mine is in the garage too, and I need to take it to the basement to get <laughs> to get it out of this place. One night I may go out and I, and I have I walked away from it six years ago and haven't done it since. So I don't know. I just couldn't go out there yeah. and do it. Not at a hundred percent. I mean, right. I, and I, I actually like playing golf. I mean, it's pretty fun. It's just, you know, the, the first time I played, I shot a 126, and then now I'm down into the probably mid nineties. So in a okay. year and a half, I've improved a little bit. Getting better. You're getting better. Very good. Yep, getting there. Should be in the, hopefully to get into the mid or high eighties next year. All right. Well, I know four or five months ago, you popped in on us here one Friday afternoon. You just dropped by the office. I'll be waiting for you to come by again sometime. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure when I'm coming back down there. I guess probably after the COVID stuff goes away, right. you know, I may start yep. getting out more, but. Yep. So West Virginia playing football this weekend. Are they on a. We are off this weekend. They're off. And then we play Oklahoma next, uh, next weekend. Oh, do you have to go there or stay? Where uh, it's, in, it's in West. It's here. Oh, it is. That'll be a, that's going to be a big game, isn't it? Yeah. Huge. Wow. If we can keep everybody well, right? Yeah, we're trying. You're, hey, listen, good to see you, my friend. Thanks for jumping on here with me today. You brought a lot of good good content here today. And uh, stay I hope safe, I helped anybody healthy. that's on the fence that wants to go in one direction or the other. Because like I said, it's I think it's a good deal. Sherry told me she was going to be watching today. She said, you got Jim on there today? I said, yep. She said, well, I'm going to be watching. Let's tell her I said hi. Or, I, or hey, well, Sherry. Have a, <laughs> have a good day. Uh, Good to take care of yourself and stay healthy, man. All right. We'll talk to you later on. All right. See you, Jim. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.